video and I'm starting this video inside. I've made some changes to the indoor garden. So when you come into the garden, this right now is serving as my storage spot. These are all the gourds and squashes that I've harvested through the garden since the middle of summer. I have acorn squash, pumpkin, cream of the crop, butternut squash. I have what I think are sweet dumpling back there, and then the kusha. I have already harvested two kusha because unfortunately they had holes in them and the kusha itself was kind of spoiling so I wanted to use them before they spoiled because they were two of my favorite ones. Now down here in these bags I have my sweet potatoes that I harvested from one of my sweet potato bags. I did not film it unfortunately I forgot to but I did have a harvest of sweet potatoes so they're going through their two weeks in the temperature that is 75 and above with a high humidity and then I'll be putting them in a cooler place after that. Back here, I still have my aloe plant. It is doing okay. I don't think they'll get a flower this winter, but it's perking back up. And I've put a mortar tray underneath it because indoors, these fabric pots leak water about halfway through. So I don't think the bottom was getting enough water. So that when I do water it, anything that comes out will end up flowing into the mortar tray. And then from the bottom up, it can absorb the water. Now from outside, I have totally replanted one, the smaller one of my turmeric. I just did this a day or two ago. So I'm waiting to see if it'll go through any type of transplant shock. The white dust you see, I actually sprinkled it with some seven dust just to make sure that I didn't bring any bugs in, even though I thoroughly washed it and changed the soil completely. And in this greenhouse, inside the larger greenhouse, I put my ginger plant. Same thing, the ginger I'm moving inside, or I should say, the ginger and the turmeric I'm moving inside to overwinter them and have a head start but also I may just keep these indoors to keep my ginger growing indoors to have a small little uh, place to harvest from in the house instead of relying on everything outside. Moving outside, underneath the tarp, I've got two rows of golden beets, a row of turnips, a row of kohlrabi, and then more beets the regular red beets. The, what I believe is kohlrabi or turnips was really being hit hard by pests and then the leaves had a lot of holes and they weren't getting bigger. So I covered this about two days ago and the flowers are starting to bounce back. Um, some of them still down here, like the beets down here are still uh, kind of worn down, but the fabric has helped a lot to cut down on the pests that were chomping on them, getting a free meal. These have, these will be ready to harvest in about 40 days or so. And I've never grown turnips or kohlrabi or beets before, so I'm interested to see the process with growing these types of fall weather crops. The strawberry patch has a ton of plants that I put in here from the spring, plus daughter plant plants that are still attached by the runner. So once it gets cooler, I'm going to go through this and cut off all the runners that I find and try to thin out some of this patch. But all the plants that I put around the edges and filled in from my green stalk seem to have survived. I don't think I lost any plants that I transplanted at all, which is great. And then hopefully next year I'll get more of a yield of strawberries. 
So I've reorganized the first bed over here. I had eight transplant sunflowers that I was trying to grow to replace for all the sunflowers that started to lean over and were dying anyway. And only two of them took. So in here, I have two sunflowers that I just put into the bed instead of putting them into the ground. And hopefully they'll get to a good size before the frost comes and takes them out. And down here, this is my Chinese white radish going all the way up in the smaller column right here. Just like the turnips and the beets, they were getting hit really heavy by pests. So I covered this whole bed with fabric. And since I've covered them with fabric a few days ago, they've doubled in size in just two days. So I'm really impressed with that. And this area right here, I have the French early, I believe, or French breakfast radish. They're kind of the pinker color that you're used to, and these are longer white. They kind of look like carrots, but they're uh, not as sweet as a carrot. They're still gonna be a radish. So again, first time growing these leafy greens, and I'm interested to see what type of harvest I'll end up getting. And this is my fall batch of carrots in this spot. And same, they're doing really well. Getting nice and green, getting some height. So you can't tell anymore, but there's two bags of sweet potatoes here and two bags of sweet potatoes over here. And they are growing all over the place. If you look over here, these are growing into the ginger and Tabasco bed. This one grew in and out of the sweet pepper bed. And with these, I just had to cut myself a walkway through here and here because they're just spreading. I opened up, as I mentioned inside, I opened one bag of my sweet potatoes just to check and make sure I have potatoes. So I'm happy to say I have sweet potatoes, but they could have been bigger. So I'm anxious to see what happens when I harvest these, but that won't be until after the first frost sometime in October or November. Now, for me, the fall is always a transitional time because I'm going from my summer garden into my fall garden and what was once really pretty and lush and green starts turning brown. And my trellis is a good example of that. So the trellis is slowly dying all the older stuff is browning on, coming and dying. But I'm not removing anything right now because I still have five butternut on here that need to get a bit more tan. And I have another five acorn squash hanging out. Plus some of the green is coming back. So I'm gonna leave this trellis, but I have added an extended piece to the trellis for next season so that I have more room. And I just like the way that the trellis worked out this year. So this is slowly but surely coming to its end. But as you saw on the inside, I do have quite a bit of fruit that I was able to harvest off of three acorn squash and three butternut. The cantaloupe and the kajari are completely gone. They died off once the weather cooled a bit here in Jersey. Inside, I only have one turmeric now. This one is thriving and I'm gonna be sad when it comes time to pick it because I know it's not ready, but I have no place to put it indoors. So this one will be harvested once the nights start getting below 50. And then over there, I have my donor ginger. The ginger that was inside came from this bucket. So the other plants I'm leaving as well until the nights get below 50 and then I'm going to harvest the ginger in all areas of the garden. In my garden stalk area, this is my garden stalk that I planted. The cilantro seeds from the dried cilantro plant that I had saved. So they are starting to sprout. And once they get a little bit taller, I'll mulch the top. I've already mulched down here where my radishes have come up and I thinned them out. Almost all of them that I planted came up and I thinned them out to three 
per area and depending on how they look I might thin them a little more and then down here is where I planted some dill and I'll have to do a little bit more research on what you're supposed to do for dill but this tower is planted for the fall this tower so far only has the mint which the mint just keeps coming back more prolific each time that I cut it but there's nothing in these two in this one there's nothing on the top but the basil that I planted at the beginning of the spring so I never replanted anything so some of this basil is regular basil some of it is lemon basil but some of it's bitter and some of it's usable so I'm, I think I'm gonna pull this out and just start over for the fall but on the other side it's got I've got sage and then at the bottom is more mint and sage and with this again I'm going to reconfigure and put all the mint together so that I have a three-tiered total mint and then a three-tier with herbs and stuff. I was supposed to have lettuce in this bed. This is where the really big nasturtium plant that I had, the golden orange. So I planted lettuces with the hope that I would have a fall crop of lettuce and all I got was nasturtium. So I just, I'm not gonna fight mother nature. I wanna mulch this over and whatever nasturtiums grow, grow. But it doesn't look like I'm gonna have a fall lettuce crop at all. The carrots over here are coming along. I didn't add any additional mulch to this. They have gotten fertilized at least once. And I don't seem to see any caterpillars on here or any major damage like what I saw for the radishes and turnips. So if I start seeing some damage, I will cover this as well. I talked about it in my last video and I went ahead and removed all of the pumpkin and the marigold that were here. They just weren't producing. They were getting very sickly looking. So I just decided to take them out and I'm going to refill this bed. Now, one of the things when you do a tall bed, I've got a hole that probably goes all the way down to the wood over here. So you really do have to make sure you compact it down. I don't know if that played any part that I had huge air pockets, if that played any part in how the pumpkin grew and produced in here. But this bed is done for the fall. It's just gonna be refilled amended and sat over the winter and my last kusha what i believe is going to be the last kusha is coming along it's about doubled in size from the last video but that's the only remaining fruit on this trellis between the pumpkin and the pepper bed and for this area, the trellis that was in between the first and the second bed has completely been removed. So now I have full access to my habaneros and jalapenos. And I've got a lot of fruit coming in. I've got a lot of green stuff at the tops that I will be harvesting. I don't believe I will be putting another trellis in between these beds it's just not enough space and makes harvesting a little hard since i harvested most of the tabasco in last week not much has changed still have a lot of unripened fruit and fruit that's ripening so i expect to have quite a bit of a harvest for the next month or two and same thing over here. I've got a lot of new fruit coming, so nothing really ready to harvest right now, but a lot of stuff that we'll be harvesting um, before the first frost. So that's the update on the garden as it is right now. It's going through an ugly phase, which happens towards the end of the season, but I'm anxious to get started on remodeling so that I can make it what I want it to be for next year. Hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching.